Hey everybody, this is a video about Mutable Instruments Tides version 2. This is actually the first module tutorial video that I've done by request. Um, and part of it was because I thought this was a great idea. I've had Tides for about two years and I've never really talked about it. Now Tides, Tides is an interesting module because one of the things I've done uh, as I've gone on with modular the last couple of years is I've really tried to decrease the amount of modules that I have which use screens or menus or modes. And Tides, Tides breaks that a little bit. There's actually three modes on Tides and those modes can make Tides a little tricky to wrap your head around sometimes. Um, despite that, despite the fact that I've tried to get rid of those, I've kept Tides because even though it has a lot of modes, I feel like it's easy enough to just set it in one mode to start with and to learn that mode fairly well. And then over the course of the next couple of years to try out different modes and, and start to use it in really different ways. What I'm gonna do in this video is uh, two things. First of all, I'm gonna give you kind of a, a whirlwind tour of what all the knobs are here, what they do and what these modes are. Um, and then we'll take a closer look at these shift modes as that's really the magic of Tides 2. Uh, and after we look at all of that, uh, I'll do some demo patches, give you some ideas about stuff that you might use this for in your own systems. All right, so right at the outset, I mean, you can see up here the, the name. Tides advertises itself as a title modulator. In the modular world, the, the technical name for what we might call this would be a function generator. Uh, all of those things are just fancy ways of saying Tides is a mod module that generates either modulations, so control voltages, or it generates audio by modulating very quickly. You can use Tides at a high level as something like an LFO, like an envelope, or like an oscillator. And I'll touch on all of those. Now I'm gonna go fairly quickly, I'm gonna give like a whirlwind tour of what all these knobs and modes are because uh, if I really took the time to talk about each of them, this would be like a four hour video. I'm gonna assume that you know some basics of modular and I'm gonna kind of quickly go through some aspects of this. So probably the most important mode is this one here in the middle. And these other two modes, the one on the top left and the top right, they relate to knobs. So this one relates to this knob and this one relates to this knob. But this mode right here, this is the most important mode and it doesn't relate to any knobs. This, this mode here controls the overall behavior of the module. I might call this the function mode. And there are three possibilities here. So there's a green mode, a red mode, and uh, a orange mode. The green mode turns this into an attack decay modulator. That is, when a trigger comes in via the trigger input port, then these four output ports will do something. And the decay part of this tells you that what's gonna happen is as soon as a trigger or a gate comes in, you'll get your rise, your attack phase, and as soon as that attack phase finishes, you're gonna get your decay phase. Now two modes over, the red mode, is an attack release envelope. So it's the same thing, a trigger or a gate's gonna come in and we're gonna get a rise, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna hold, it's gonna hold it high as long as the gate and the trigger input is high. And then as soon as the gate is removed, then we're gonna get that release, that downward release phase. So in both of these modes, in the green mode, which is attack decay, and the red mode, which is attack release, we have to give it a trigger and Tides will basically give us, on these four outputs, it will give us some control voltage out. And we can use these knobs to sort of shape and describe what control voltage out we want. We'll talk about those in a second. The other mode, which is the orange mode in the middle, if you're new to Tides, I would recommend starting with this mode. This is the mode that I started with. I think it's the easiest to wrap your head around. This is a cycling function generator mode. And so more or less what happens, you can see down here are the four outputs, the LEDs are sort of going back and forth between red and green. Red here is indicating negative voltage, green is indicating a positive voltage. And the cyclic mode means that we're gonna run a function and as soon as that function ends, we're gonna start it again. And in this way, we get an oscillation, we get a repeating function. Now, we can use this as an LFO, or we could use this as an oscillator, and the only difference between those is the speed that we're going at, which is what this mode in the top left is. So up here on the top left, you can see that there's a mode here, which also has green, orange, and red to it. And what this mode in the top left is doing is it's defining the range of the frequency knob. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop it into green. Green is the slowest mode. And if you were to compare tides to, to a standard oscillator like Dixie, you know, most standard oscillators have something like this where you can go from VCO mode to LFO mode. All you're doing there when you switch those is you're changing the speed of the oscillation and you're changing really what your octave or your tune controls are affecting. And that's the same thing that's happening here. So that green mode is kind of an LFO mode. And what you'll get out of that is you'll get something slow. You can see that from the LEDs here, how very slowly they're moving back and forth. I'll patch this into the oscilloscope. And why don't we zoom out here? And so you'll be able to see uh, I've got the zoom level set to one second. So this is representing one second of time. And you can see that we've got a fairly, fairly slow oscillation happening. What's crazy is if you dial this all the way down, tides will take over a minute to do an entire cycle, which is crazy slow if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, on the upside, when we're in this slow LFO mode, we can go all the way up to what, what would, I would consider to be a fairly fast modulation, but this is nowhere near audio rate. The second range, the orange one, is more or less in between LFO and audio. So you can see on the slow side here, it's still a fairly slow LFO. This is, this is maybe what you would start out with if you wanted a slow LFO, but it'll go, it'll go up pretty fast. Now, I don't know for sure how fast this is going, but, but my guess is this is probably going about 10 hertz. This orange mode will get you just below audio rate. So it'll go from pretty slow to, to pretty fast. And then lastly, the red mode. This is the audio rate mode. So on the far left, it'll be just out of human hearing range, probably about 15 to 20 hertz. And then all the way up, it'll go really high. And I patch that actually into the audio output and give you a little listen. So returning back to uh, the slower mode here, I want to talk about what some of these other controls do. And first up is shape. Now, you can look at this and you probably already know what it's going to do. I mean, it's, it's fairly obvious, right? Like you've got these different shapes on here and, and as you turn it, you're going to get these different shapes out the other end. One thing that's worth mentioning though, that I didn't realize until recently, this shape knob, what's actually happening, Tides is a digital module. And the, the function that we get out the other side is actually a point in a wavetable. This knob here is just changing what point in the wavetable that we're actually using. So Tides really is a wavetable oscillator or a wavetable LFO where there's no user wavetables, you just get this one fixed wavetable and all of the different shapes are printed. And as you can see, there's a bunch of interesting stuff over here. We have kind of exponential into logarithmic. Let me speed that up so it's a little easier to see. You can see we have exponential into logarithmic, kind of that curve up with that fat slope down. Um, and there's different shapes in between. There's kind of like this weird pointy thing. Of course, I was using triangle earlier on. Let me kind of get over here to this sinusoidal. So it's not, not quite a sine, um, but it's sort of similar. And then to the inverse of what we started with, which is a logarithmic into exponential. Uh, the thing to know here, though, is that as you turn this knob, or in the future, as we modulate this with a control voltage, you're getting smooth interpretation of a wavetable. And you can see down here on the scope as I do this, it's not breaking or it's not stepping. I'm getting just this nice smooth transition between them, which is really kind of cool. All right, let me point this back at triangle and I wanna talk about some of these other controls. So slope, if you've ever used a vector graphics program, you probably know of a function called skew where it takes the shape and it it pulls all the points left or right. And that's exactly what slope is gonna do. So based on the shape that we have, slope will skew that shape to the left or skew that shape to the right. Now it will do nothing, so there will be no skew happening once the knob is in the perfect 12 o'clock position. But you can watch down here, and as I pull that knob over to the left, it's gonna, it's gonna skew, it's gonna bend. It's gonna bend to that shape so that at the far left, we've actually bent the top of the triangle all the way over to the beginning. And you can see that we're getting a saw wave at that point. Likewise, if I go the other way around, we're gonna get a ramp. Now, this works with any of these shapes. So for example, if I came over here to this sinusoidal type of shape, you can see I can bend it. Now I'm getting kind of a ramp, 
but with a little bit more of a logarithmic curve. Same thing if I go the other way, I'm getting a sawtooth, but it's, it's a little bit more rounded off on the top. So there are certainly some interesting things you can do here. Now, what's neat is both of those will still work at audio rate. I'll show you that in a second, but let's take a look at smoothness first. I'm gonna bump this up to audio rate real quick to talk about the next knob. Now, this the smoothness knob is easier to hear at audio rate. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice here is that all of these, these medium-sized knobs, these three here, they do nothing when they're perfectly up and down at 12 o'clock. And same thing here with smoothness. Smoothness, you're gonna get a different behavior whether you're left or whether you're right. So, let me bring up a sound here. Uh, just to demonstrate something here real quick while we're listening to audio right before I start twiddling that knob. These shape knobs, this wave shape, So there you can hear, you can really hear the wavetable part of it. And then likewise, uh, if I'm in audio rate mode, I can get a, sine, a saw wave. Okay, so keep that in mind. What this smoothness knob does here is to the left, it's gonna wave fold the shape after the shape knob and after the slope knob. You can hear the harmonics really coming out there. I'll show you that here in a second slower on the oscilloscope. If you turn this to the left, you're getting a different behavior. So to the right is to the right is wavefold. To the left, it's gonna run through a two-pole non-resonant filter. Which is kind of interesting because in a way, you almost have a little miniature synth voice here. All right, so if I'm back in, back in the slower mode, let's take a look at those in the slower mode. So you can see down here on the scope, as I bring up the wave folding, we, you know, we get kind of that weird bent jaggedy shape that you would expect. Smoothness when you're in the low, low speed mode doesn't do as much until you get it like really, really down. It's kind of sensitive down here in the low range, but you can see I'm basically smoothing out the triangle wave that I'm set on. I'm smoothing out that triangle wave into a kind of a sine wave, which if that's what you want, uh, I guess that's cool. Uh, I think that this smooth mode really kind of is a little bit more valuable at uh, audio rate. Okay, so we've talked about all the basics here. Let me just recap before we go on to this last one. So we've got Tides, which has two, basically two main modes, uh, a function, a one-time triggered function, so an attack decay or attack release envelope, or a looping function where we can get cycles. We can use the looping function to either run at audio rate or to run at a slower speed to modulate. Once within all of those, we have our choice of which wavetable shape we want to play. We can skew that shape left and right to give it a little bit of uh, customization. And we can smooth that out either by running it through a filter or by folding it. 